All right, hello, welcome all you ham radio weirdos, just like me. Uh, thank you for joining me. This is ham log, vlog number 12 in my series. I do this every week. I do it on Monday nights. It's a good time to do it. All right, here, I'm going to go ahead and give you the outline because I have a lot of interesting things to show you. And personally, I think they get better and better as we go. All right, first of all, I'm going to talk about Hamvention and our meetup. We are having a YouTuber meetup at a bar. We have all the details now, and I want you to tell me if you can come. Anyway, that's the first part. I'm going to show you a QSL card. I'm going to show you an interesting email I got from a, guy, from a ham radio guy. I'm going to show you a ham radio book and talk a little bit about that. I have a real interesting antenna right here next to me that I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk a little bit about live streaming, and I'm going to show you two pieces of ham, uh, camping gear that are pretty interesting. Okay, so that's the outline. We're going to get started right now with the meetup, the time, the date, and everything. Okay, here we go. Okay, as you notice, we have 31 days, 11 hours. We have almost pretty much one month away before Hamvention. That's all cool. I actually, I spent so much money lately, I'm not going to buy hardly anything. If I get anything, it'll probably be a straight key. I'm thinking about getting some kind of nice straight key. Not super great, but that's about all I'm going to get. I'm actually, I'm actually spent out. I've got a lot of ham radio gear. I've been buying a lot of stuff. I need to, I need to roll it back. So I'm not going to be buying much. So I'm just going to be there to soak up the atmosphere and take video. You know what I mean? All right. So our meetup, we are having a meetup and we know where it is. We are going to the Warped Wing Brewery in downtown uh, 26 Wyandotte Street, Dayton, Ohio, okay? It's called the Warp Wing. It's going to be on 6 p.m. Saturday, May 18th, 6 to 9 or 10 or whatever we feel like. And if you want to know what that looks like, so here's Dayton in all its glory. <laughs> in all its glory. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, but have you been to Dayton? <laughs> That's mean. It's a cool place, all right? It's a cool place. All right, warp. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm going to get so much flack for that. All right, so let's drop down here to the Warp Wing Brewery. All right, let's take a look here. Let's walk around the street. I always do this when I go somewhere I've never been to. It looks, it looks like a dilapidated downtown, but it looks like they're fixing it up. They did this a lot in Chicago where they is really bad parts, but then they started building condos. And see, it looks, you can tell they're building right there. Anyway, this is pretty cool. It looks like they took an old factory building and they turned it into... <laughs> I'm sorry, I got the giggles. They turned it into a brewery, and it actually looks pretty cool. But it doesn't look like there's much parking. What's up with that? Oh, my God. If just 50 or 60 people show up, well, maybe you can park along the street. Maybe there's more parking. I hope so. That might be a problem. Mm. Anyway, let me know if you're going. Just kind of type in the comments, I want to go, okay? Just, I want to go. And you can find me, you can find my email on QRZ, type, type me in, find me, email me, let me know, and that way I kind of have an idea how many people I'm bringing. That being said, who else is going to be there? All right, so I only know of three other YouTubers that are going to be there. There's going to be more, and anyone is invited. Anybody that wants to come is invited. All right, we're going to try to, we're going to overwhelm this place. All right, you may have heard of Josh Hoshnasi. I think that's how you say it. You may have heard of him. He happens to have 50,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Um, he's going to be there. He's kind of been co-leading this with me. Uh, he'll be there, and we're going we're to talk and meet him. Um, Ron C., he's my good friend in, out in Virginia. He's getting very close to his first 1,000 subscribers. And if you don't know it, you have to have 1,000 subscribers before you can make a single penny. It's a, it's a labor of love until you get to 1,000. And then you got to wait another six months to make your first 100 because it was really hard to make money on YouTube. Anyway, good job. Almost getting to 1,000 subscribers. Um, that's It's hard. It really is. Um, but he's got kind of a different channel. He has a moto, moto vlog channel. All right. And, of course, K8MRD. He is also becoming, come, becoming kind of a friend. I like some of his videos. This Frozen Lakes on the Air video is pretty cool. I like that. I love when people go out on a, in a place you're not really supposed to be and do ham radio. That's really cool to me because it's super hard to do. So anyway, check out K8 MRD. He's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Ron's going to be there. Josh's going to be there. And their subscribers. Now, there's going to be more YouTubers there, but I don't know them. I don't know them. So I'm so sorry. I did not mention your name because I don't know you. I actually don't watch that many YouTube videos. I don't watch ham radio videos that often unless they're really weird or interesting because... I, I do lots of other research and I do lots of other stuff and I try not to watch a lot of ham radio vi videos because I already do it and I don't know, I don't want to be influenced and all that stuff. So anyway, that's who's going to be there. 
and we're going to be there on 6 p.m. Saturday, May 18th. Try to be there. Okay, so I've already admitted this is kind of a show-and-tell show. I'm taking things that I find are interesting, ham radio related, all kinds of related things, and I just show you. It's a show and tell show. Show and share, as they say in my kids' uh, kindergarten. All right, this is a QSL card I got from Danny Roten, AB6UR in Texas. I think it's cool. I've had this a long time. This was 7.195 single sideband, April of 2018. Straight from Texas, Lone Star State. I like this because it looks like a postcard. I love old postcards. I have a whole bunch of them, by the way. Old ones, those 60 style. Maybe I'll show them to you sometime. All right, we're going to get right into a book review. I'm going to be honest. I have not read this book straight through and through. I've had this a long time, and I'm doing a show and tell, so I just thought I'd dig this out and kind of show you. So this is ARRL's Ham Radio Frequently Asked Questions. And what I would say about this is this book is good for anybody, but it's, I would not give this to a beginner, a straight-up beginner. They need to be looking at look who's talking type book. They need to be learning. But this is kind of a little bit advanced. But anyway, the kinds of things that are in this book are question, answer, question, answer, question. The answers are kind of short. But I can see a lot of education being had here. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you a few questions and just kind of see if you would kind of like to have this book. I'll put the link in the description. As always, everything goes in the description. Oh, God, I forgot to mention. I'm so sorry. So that meetup, the me the ham radio meetup, there is a going to be a link in the description on a Facebook page. You need to click on that, go and and say that you're going. Okay, go to that Facebook page. But we'll talk about that later. Anyway, we're still in the book. Let's ask some questions. All right, what's the Shorty Forty? The Shorty Forty is a compact forty meter dipole antenna for limited space. Okay, it's stuff like that. Let's ask a question. Aren't long wire and random wire antennas the same thing? Many hams use the term interchangeably. They can be the same thing, but not necessarily. Random wire is, and it describes it, you know, so that's kind of an, a, an easier question, but let's just go through and see. Where do I find these used radios at bargain and basement prices? And it says they are all over. In classified ads, this might be a little dated. Classified ads, really? <laughs> Mail order houses, probably the best place to buy is from someone you trust. When shopping for a radio, what feature should I consider? I have filters. Audio filters, notch filters, pass band tuning. You know, it's just packed full of information. This is the kind of thing that if you want to brush up, you're rusty, you want to get, you want to educate yourself, you get a book like this. Um, it's not a beginner's book. It's not something that's going to teach you. It's just, it's going to enhance you. That's what I would say. I have a CW keyer that's designed strictly for grid block keying. Its output keying line goes. That's a hard question, man. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm about to install a homebrew vertical antenna and system of buried wired radios. I really would like to do that someday. But it involves calling and digging, and I want to know I'm going to be there for at least 10 years. That's why I haven't done that. I really want a flagpole antenna with radials dug into the dirt. I want that really bad, and I want the lightning protection and all that stuff. I haven't done that because I never felt like I was going to stay for, for long enough to do that, but that's why I haven't done that. All right, what sort of wire should I use? I would imagine that some wires would con con corrode in the soil faster than others. Uninsulated wire can be expected to last for several reels and years and just about any kind of soil. Insulated copper wire is even better. This is the kind of book that this is. Questions and answers. It covers a lot of topics. It's real interesting. This is the kind of thing that you would just read for fun. All right. I'm going to go beyond that. Now, all right. I'm going to show you the radio antenna, and I'm going to have you... Guess what it is. Here we go. Look at this sucker, man. Check this out. Look how many elements this has. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 elements. I expect this is the reflector right here. Right here. Is that right? All right, so I'm keeping this a mystery. I just want you to kind of guess and tell me what you think it is. Of course, it's a professionally made uh, uh, Yagi-type antenna, directional antenna. Now I'm going to reveal to you that it takes, I have it converted to, I think this is called an SMA connector, an SMA connector to, guess what, USB. Now what you do, what this is, it's a Wi-Fi antenna. It's a super duper <laughs> directional Wi-Fi antenna. And I'm going to take this out and show you how it works someday. 
So what you do is you convert this to a USB, and then you get one of the USB Wi-Fi adapters. Well, that's what this is, actually. This is a USB Wi-Fi adapter. It's very small. And then you screw this SMA on. You have to have that little... You, they sell these with the SMA. You screw it in. You put it in your computer. You get an app. Let me find the app. Okay, now this is the app. It's called Wi-Fi Analyzer. I think it's free. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, but you can see all these networks, and it tells you how strong they are. So you can take this and, like, put it in your laptop and kind of, like, point it. This thing would be, I got this for, like, camping or something or on the road. This might be really good for live streaming, even though it's really weird and awesome and kind of, I don't know, it's kind of, what do you call it, Obvi obvious or conspicuous. But you would point it at your source, and I bet you could get some really good range out of this. So that's what I want to be testing. This is a Wi-Fi antenna. It costs a lot. Of, I think it costs a lot, but... I really want it, and I still have it. I love buying cool gear. But anyway, you can see all these are networks around my house. These are all networks around my house. I'm not using this at the, at the moment, though, so it's just common. All right, so I just want to show you that. I'm going to be showing that in a future videos where I actually take it out in the field and use it. Okay, we're going to wrap up with a couple things. I'm, I just got some live stream gear. I got this device that helps you stream live. I'm going to be doing more live streaming and I've got a lot of comments of people that want to contact me. And I'm going to set a date, some dates, maybe this Friday. And we're going to live stream and I'm going to tell you what frequency I'm on. And we can have some contacts and we can see if it works. You'll know what frequency I'm on. We all can kind of share and have fun. Uh, so I'm going to be doing more live streaming. And maybe if I can get it to work, I'm going to live stream our Dayton Hamvention event. If I can get it to work, I'm going to live stream even at Dayton Hamvention. And you can, if you can't make it, you can watch my live stream. I'll let you know how all that works, but I just got the gear. It's all kind of complicated because Wi-Fi is not good everywhere and all that stuff. So that's where I, we're at. Okay, if you stay with me this long, thank you. Please give me a like, a thumbs up, share, and all that stuff. I appreciate it. We're going to do the final three things, which is a... I've got camping gear for you. This is I love camping gear. You know that. I'm going to show you two cool things. I'm going to show you one thing that's not related to anything, but it's a super cool to me. So here we go. I got this at a, on special. I got this on special at, I think, Bass Pro Shop in Springfield, Missouri. All right, you know what this is? <laughs> oh, it's the coolest thing ever. It's a bowl. Yeah, I actually think that's pretty cool because it can slide in your bag. And if you have one of those uh, mountain house meals, you can pour it in there and eat. It seems pretty good. You know, it's kind of... Kind of flimsy. It was really cheap. It's like four dollars. It was on sale or something. But it's a fold-up bowl. How cool is that? I also got. Do you know what this is? Have you ever seen one of these? It's really cool. It's actually. It. It's not going to do it justice here on the video because you need water to really make it work. But what do you do with this? Am I a gadget geek or what? Seriously, dude. I, seriously. I'm just don't tell anybody. All right, so what you get is a huge water container. And now it looks kind of silly, right? But when you fill this with water, it bows out really far. And you get this huge thing of water. If you've ever actually camped in the real woods before and you needed, and the water was kind of far away and you needed to wash your head or your hands or your hat or your shirt or something, this thing. I wish I could show it to you, but it bows way out, and you get this huge thing of water, and you can just sit it down, and it just holds the water perfectly. This is from Cedo Summit. I don't know what it is. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested, but it, these things are really cool. It's got a really cool feel to it, kind of a rubbery type feel. All right, now, I used this in my last video, and a lot of people asked me about this. This is a titanium spoon. It's really lightweight. It's really cool to put in your bag, and I'm glad I had it because the Mountain House Meals, you just it's just really cool. It's easy to clean and stuff. All right, I've got one more thing to show you, and it's pretty cool. So up in Chicago area, I used to have a flea market booth, and there were some really cool things in that, and I saw this. Have you ever seen, remember Jurassic Park? 
they had this amber with mosquitoes and they drew the DNA out of it. And I bought this for $30. It's got, this one has mosquitoes in it. And it says, it says insects and spiders. I actually have spiders in here. And it says in here, this is 150 to 320 million years old. I have insects in my house that are over 150 million years old. Am I wrong? Did I get the year wrong? Holy crap. You can actually, I wish you could see this. It's fair, I know it's very difficult to see on here, but there's actually insects in there. And I bought this for like $35 about 15 years ago, and I'm never selling it because it's just freaking cool. Every time I look at this, I think, holy crap, there were insects 150 million years ago. Well, that's what this says right here. It says early Cretaceous, 150 million years ago. It's found and associated with oldest amber and youngest and oldest. Anyway, regardless, I have some old ass bugs, and that's freaking cool. All right. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this is interesting to you. Every week I'm going to bring things out until I keep running out of stuff. And I will see you at Hamvention. If you want to be there, please let me know in the description if you want to come. That way I know of at least three people that let me know. But if I kind of had a head count, I kind of know who's there, I can kind of say, hey, hey, there's going to be 15 or 12 or 4 or 5. I kind of want to know. All right, let me know. Thanks for show showing up. Bye.